Greetings. I'm making this uh, latest video in response to a uh, question I was asked. But, um, I hope you don't mind me saying your name. Uh, Sarah Plummer, you asked which way is north. And you are quite correct when you say that north is up. That's going to need some explaining. Um, now, I've already made a video um, entitled on The True Shape of the Earth uh, about five months ago, which does explain it. But I'm going to go over some of these points and uh, give you, a, hopefully, a slightly different take on things, primarily with words, uh, because they're a big clue. I'm sure a lot of you especially in the truth-seeking movement, will have come across um, this raging debate. Um, some people will shy completely away from it because it's, it's one of the biggest cause of arguments and it has become almost like a religion. But the point is, with all, it's like everything else. Um, take, for example, 9-11. It is never... Um, a straightforward us and them. You have this unholy trinity of truth, controlled opposition and the outright lies. And between those two, there's further twists. Um, all for the, primarily for, to keep people divided so they cannot see what is going on. So this whole debate over flat earth is a prime example of this, where it has been stirred up. I mean, when you've, you've got the, the most ridiculous claims that Australia doesn't exist and they're all paid actors, so um, uh, probably the most famous person that I, or infamous person that I talk to is Santos Bonacci. I, I've, I've spoken to him personally on Skype and I've looked at, uh, what he says and it is spot on um, I, I don't advocate following anybody um, this I, I can this is down to the we come down to the to words with this if you, you keep in keep in mind that the vowels are the fouls so if you follow you fallow you're not being individual you're just co copying and following someone else that does not mean of course that you cannot listen to what other other people say um, it's right to get I, I've, I've always said to people don't just look at one video on YouTube on a topic look at 20 deliberately try and pick out both sides of any argument on any topic doesn't matter what it is so I, I have jokingly said before it's amazing when you talk about flat earth that those that refute it or believe that we're on a, a spinning ball it's it's amazing how quickly they will go over the edge <laughs> um, but let's just look at <coughs> I want to take this from a different angle because there are lots and lots of videos out there about the rights and wrongs and the, the, the arguments on this. I, personally, I went into this with the idea when I first heard about it. I'd heard, heard there's a flat earth society and I'm thinking it's this group of people who have this, um, so we say, belief system stuck in the dark ages and are still carrying on. I thought, well, that's absolutely crazy. There's no way. Um, but the more I looked into it, the more questions came out that there was no satisfactory answers. Um, when you also consider, I'm, I'm going to quote Jordan Maxwell, the truth seeking movement is like uh, trying to empty the Pacific Ocean with a cup. And that applies equally to this um, particular topic as well. So lost my train of thought there. So let's look at, for example, at the words. Now, you live in a world. Now, how are you spelling that word? Are you spelling it W-O-R-L-D or are you spelling it W-H-I-R-R-L-E-D? Are you in a world? Are you in a spin? 
I mean, you've, you know from probably as a child, if you spin yourself round, you go dizzy. You don't see things and uh, so clearly when you're dizzy. Now let's look at other words. We, we are in days. Now are you spelling that with a Y or a Z or a Z? Are you weak and weakened? Are you one of these slave workers to this system who for five days is weak and then you're weakened? So you're too tired to even think about anything about what you're here for. So there's some big clues in those words there. Um, glo globe, globular. Um, it can be apply to a clot in the blood system. A blockage. It also can mean a water droplet. Now, this is something you can do any one of you can do, and I'm sure you will all have seen this phenomenon. You haven't got to go anywhere to do this except look up at the sky. Bearing in mind that light travels in a straight line unless it is um, influenced by a prism and then it separates the colours. Um, it will always travel in a straight line. So if you have, if you have the surface of the earth and then you have clouds at, let's, for, for argument's sake, we're going to say 10 miles in height. So there is a 10 mile difference between the underside of these clouds and the surface of the earth. Now at sunrise and sunset, when the earth is perceived to be coming over the edge of this curve, above the horizon, notice it's horizon, which is very similar to the word horizontal, because that is exactly what it is. But anyway, this sun will appear to rise or set. Bearing in mind that the light is straight, when do you ever see the underside of clouds fully illuminated? You'll see the sun when it appears to be low in the sky and you will see the sides of a cloud um, all lit up and glowing white and you will see the tops of the clouds but you will never see the complete underside of the cloud on that basis alone that should tell you that the sun is above the clouds it does not come below it even as a, just as a perception on this curve now when you think about in your mind you take any shape um, sorry any size of, of ball so from an orange or a football or even um, a hot air balloon, something that is fairly circular. The further and further you move away from it, you start to see a curve. Now I have been on transatlantic flights uh, around about 35,000 feet. Now it's a very interesting phenomenon that um, when you look out that window of that plane, the horizon, the, the line, is always in the centre of your eyes. At the higher you go, the, the more that horizon line rises with it, which it would not do on a ball, no matter how big it is. Now, well, let's, look at, uh, let's look at the Big Apple. There's another big... Uh, see, the dark side will always put the truth there in plain sight, it's not talking about New York, it is talking about the Earth. This is the Earth. So you're now going to say, well, hang on a minute, that's pretty much round. Yes, this is what I've said before. The Earth is round, it is also flat, and it is also hollow. It just depends what perspective you're looking at it. So, just to show for the purposes of demonstrations. No trick to this. I'm going to cut the apple in half. I'm going to cut it, put it on it, shall we say, its side. Like that. You'll notice that you have a pattern there in the middle. This is where the sacred geometry comes into, into play in all, all of this as well. Now, this in the centre is what you are on. Everything in nature 
follows this same sequence, this same design. We do it. We have miniature versions of Earth. We have two of them. Your eyeballs. If you look at the eyeball from the side, so we are actually on the equivalent of the iris. The dome is the lens, but when we're talking about this dome, this is where this, this saying seventh heaven comes, because it's not just one layer. There's more than one layer to it. Um, you know, if you take the sci the established scientific view, or the view that is in enforced upon us and reinforced continuously, um, you've only got to look at the start, the opening sequence of any film from any of these big film companies. They often show this spinning ball, uh, and they put that idea of a globe in your head. Um, it's it's always one in, it's always in a classroom. It's something that's taught. There's never any well. It could be this or it's this is what it is. Well, the evidence and just common sense will show you it's not. Now, so basically, we are on this this surface. <laughs> when you're talking to people in Australia, they are not upside down. The the, the biggest argument um, that also comes into this obviously is gravity. Um, that something is holding us down. But you've only got to think about, we're supposed to be on this spinning ball. So if it's spinning, at the equator line is going to be moving at a, a much greater speed than at the axis points. So the gravity must be variable. Nobody obviously told birds or insects or any other flying uh, living creatures about gravity um, it, it's so easy to explain its density and buoyancy it's as simple as that I mean you take a, a ball that is filled with with a gas say air uh, like a beach ball and you try and push it under the water now where's the gravity gone there because the gas is lighter and it's pushing its density and buoyancy that is all it is with everything um, it's so simple uh, it's Ockram's razor. The simplest answer is often the right one. Now, going back to the point about the north being up, I don't know how many of you are aware on the ancient Egyptian maps and probably most other civilizations, their north is actually south. It's reversed. And it would make sense as well. You would have your upper part as going outwards because if, we, if we're not on a ball and we're on a basically a solid um, part of a structure then the North Pole becomes the uh, the center point and everything radiates out funny enough that's what the Sun does as well um, everything radiates out so it would make sense to have the maps the other way up and what we would perceive as north is actually going outwards now, there's another way of testing this, and this is something you can look at on YouTube. Um, if you have the equipment uh, to do so, then this is a, something you, you can all try yourself. Time-lapse photography. And you point the camera up at the sky, and you take a series of photographs. You will see that all the stars make a perfect circle anywhere in the world. If we were on a spinning ball, the, there is only one, well, two places that could happen, the North and the South Pole. Now, while I think of it, on the subject of the South Pole, they say they cannot put the marker on the true South Pole because there is nothing there. Well, isn't it all supposed to be covered in a mile or two miles of ice? So wherever you've put this marker, you've put it into something. Now you're saying there's nothing there, and yet the maps show otherwise. Now... One of the most interesting things, I didn't realise how valuable this was going to be, um, from a car boot sale, a road at, um, a atlas of the world. This is Hammond, the Hammond World at Atlas by Funk and Wagnalls. Um, so that's a very good map. It cost me, I think, about a pound. I just picked it up. I thought, yeah, I could do with an atlas. It's got some very, lots of statistical information, topography, and um, you've got all the counties of the individual states because it's a, an American publication. But what is most interesting about this, this book 
is when you come to the first page, lo and behold, there you have a flat earth map, the equidi uh, I can never remember this word, the azimuthal equidistant projection. And you'll notice um, on this map, let's try and get this close enough to the camera, the shape of, of Australia is rather strange compared to the globe. Uh, I would love to be able to charter a plane and do a north-south coast-to-coast crossing, take that measurement and then do another, arrange for another flight to go from, shall we say, east to west or clockwise, anti-clockwise in a straight line and take that measurement and see if it tallies more with this or with the globes. Um, likewise, we're, we're told we're 26, uh, rough, just under 26,000 miles at the um, the, the, the circumference at the, the equator so it wouldn't take a lot apart from obviously there'll be the red tape to arrange to have flights um, flying 50 miles south of the equator or say let's put it on the, the Tropic of Capricorn and fly uh, a plane um, or several planes I would think because it will soon become apparent if that distance is, is greater or lesser than the distance at the, the, of the circumference at the, the equator. So it's a, it's a, it will be another experiment which will be very easy to do without going anywhere near the Antarctic. But obviously you're going to be going into different international airspaces and there'll be all this red tape and it, it won't be allowed. There'll be one at least that will be a fly in the ointment and stop and put this stupid argument to bed. Um, this whole argument between fl flat earth and globe earth, people say, oh, what does it matter? Um, even if they're seeing the rest of this, it's like, we can sort this out afterwards, the truth will come out. Yes, you can say it, see it from that way. But what this, this hinges upon is you've got religion and science. You also have... You have spirituality on the side of light and you have logic, real science. Now, the, the, the fundamental difference between religion and spirituality is all religions are about sun worship. And that's where they stop. Spirituality is going beyond the sun and looking at what has created everything because when you see everything as being coming from one source, this original source of creation, you start seeing things in a different way and you have a lot more respect for everything else around you. Um, even a pebble or a, st or a stone, you start seeing it in a different way. Now, going back to this apple, see what darkness does is they will take a truth and twist it. So they have taken you from where you are on this solid dimension, three-dimensional world that we are in. And they've put us, they've taken us from this, this surface and they've put us onto the outside. Now, what is this ball? Now, if we were, are to cut this, I'm gonna have to line this up again. We cut this apple the other way. This is the answer to everything. This is the knowledge of good and evil. This is the answer to everything. This is the Trinity. You have a core. This is the magnetic field. You have the electric and the dielectric, the red shift and the blue shift. Now you'll see that replicated over and over in everything. Look at the taps on your sink. You'll, you'll see red is used to depict hot, which is fire and and cold and water which is represented by blue red is also the representation of masculine blue is the representation of feminine this all comes into this we have this man magnetic field the, the torus fields it we have it in if you look in uh, to spirituality and the chakras and the energy centers of the human body, it's, it's exactly the same principle with everything. It is a repeat process over and over from the same design, same blueprint. We are not separate from Earth. We are part of it. We even have the same design, like with the eyeballs. But um, 
the, the, with the dark side, they will always give you these ridiculous figures, um, the sun being 93 million miles away, I think it is. Well, you'll get days where you'll see the sun rays breaking through the clouds, forming a triangle. Um, it doesn't take a... It, doesn't, it really it's just common sense. It's an equilateral triangle between those two sun rays. If you follow that projection, um, the other side of the cloud, it will... The, the light comes from a centre point and it's basic trigonometry you can see just from that it is not 93 million miles away that is ridiculous um, basically what you've got is I was on the cover of this book now a lot of people say oh look there's a globe no that is the magnetic fields going round there's the core, there's the core. This is the surface that we are actually on in the middle. There are seven lower Earths and there are seven higher Earths, as above, so below. It is that simple. Now, the ho this whole idea, where does this tilt come from? Apart from the, you've got the, um, the 66 and the 33 uh, and a half degree angle and all the connotations to do with threes and sixes, oh, shock, horror, dark side. No, the tilt is the imbalance. If you think like in terms of Libra and the scales, the imbalance between the divine masculine and the divine feminine. It is being in favour of the divine masculine for too long. It needs to be brought back into balance and women treated to equally. See, this whole subject brings in so much more to it. It's, I, I've thought quite a lot of before even making, the, making this video because it's like, am I going to talk about this in a different way? Um, but also give you things that you can actually go out and <coughs> you can try for yourself. Um, if you live like a, I used to live, I used to follow a road down to the south coast, and I could observe every day the sea level would drop as I dropped. If you were if you were to put that on a two dimensional photograph, it then looks like a two hundred foot high wall. But then you put it back into three dimensions, you've now got depth. But the eye makes it look as if it is rising and falling in relation to where you are on, as you're going down this hill. Not only that, where I used to live on the south coast, I could see, um, I think it was about, I calculated it was about 25 miles across. Um, I shouldn't be able to see, stand on the beach and see the beach level that far if we're on a curve given these statistics. I mean, it is provable from so many places around the world the the distances that you can you can see which they try and say is a mirage it's a, a distance is over a hundred miles which should be something like eight, i think it's eight thousand feet of curvature according to the figures well if it's just a case of the figures that are wrong why don't they why doesn't the scientific community say look sorry we've miscalculated this we're going back to the drawing board and we'll give you a new set of figures but they don't do that and they don't do this with anything. They have this term called anomaly to explain anything that doesn't fit in with the theory. This is the problem with science. It tries to get facts to fit a theory. Well, it should be the other way around. The theory has to be based on the facts. It's always this jargon with this mainstream science and throwing in these ridiculous numbers that your mind can't even imagine I mean how can you can't picture 93 million miles in your mind that is so stupid um, what I do find rather amazing is how people will readily accept this whole concept with a spinning ball um, going round at these ridiculous figures round the Sun which is also going round something else at an even greater figure which oh, Mac Gazillion or whatever it would be. Um, but it's funny how the stars, you look right back um, through all the ancient depictions and things, also look um, up at the sky. How many times do you see the same star constellations? Um, they're, they're always there. They don't change. It, it's like a baby's mobile on the ceiling. Everything is just going round and round and round. Um, we're not moving. Uh, every experiment that has been done cannot detect any movement at all. We are a firmament. We're we're under a firmament. We are terra firma. I mean, it's 
Now, if you can't get it, can't get it spelt out more um, plainly than that. I mean, planet. It's a plane net. It's a plane. 